Hello to everyone and welcome to this tutorial about the new GoPro Hero 9 Black. It's already the third or the fourth time I'm doing such a tutorial. It's not a review. It's a tutorial on how to control this camera. I will show you everything you need. I will give you some examples. You have an index where you see where to find what. And if you don't want to watch the entire tutorial and there's just one specific topic that you're interested in, just jump to the specific minute or even hour or second. I don't know how long this tutorial will be. If you would like to support my channel, feel free to buy this camera from the affiliate links provided in the video description below. So let's get started straight away. So ladies and gentlemen, because there were some people complaining about uh, my last tutorial, which I did about the GoPro Hero 8 Black, uh, I didn't show how to put in the battery. I am so sorry about it that you don't know how to put in the battery. So that's the GoPro Hero 9 now. And as you can see from this side, here are two compartments. The upper one is for a micro SD card. If you would like to support me, feel free to buy this micro SD card from the video description below. I can recommend it to buy it at least in 128 gigabytes. First of all, let's have a look how you get in this card. Make sure you have the color side, so not the one with the chips on the back side, facing inside the camera, like this. Press on it a little bit harder and then it's inserted. To get this card out, push it and then it pops out. Sorry, the autofocus from my camera is running. And then you take out this card. The battery of the new GoPro Hero 9 has now 500 milliamperes more than the previous version. Of course, we are now shooting in 5K and we have two displays which need some battery. So this one here has 1720 milliamperes. So first of all, take the battery, push it in like this. If you would like to charge the camera, it works using any USB-C cable out there. You can use a power bank, you can use the charger from your car, you can use your wall adapter from your phone or your iPad to charge the battery and it probably takes two hours uh, plus minus five minutes to fully charge this 1720 milliampere battery. To close this compartment, take the latch push it down and then push it inside. I know it kind of feels like if you would break the sledge to open it, push it again downwards and then towards the outside. To get out the battery, take it, push it back in. I can recommend that you have at least two batteries. I'll put a link into the video description below. One thing which I liked about my old GoPro Hero 7, which is now on sale, so it's about 200 to 250 bucks, which is pretty good because they kind of like the same performance. Except this one here isn't shooting in 5K. It still has an image stabilizer, which I love. It's really good, hyper smooth one, and I don't really see a huge difference compared to the GoPro Hero 8 or even GoPro Hero 9. The link is in the video description below. So the advantage of the old one is that you have an HDMI port, which isn't there on the new GoPro Hero 8 or 9 anymore. You have USB-C port at the side. So there's no need to open the battery compartment to charge the camera. And here's the battery next to the micro SD slot. If you take out the battery, you can see it has less capacity it has 1,220 milliamperes. 
Don't be irritated from that latch. I did it on purpose just in case we run out of battery and we need to charge the camera. So to turn on the camera, push that button for two seconds on top. The camera will turn on automatically. It will start to record a video automatically. If you push that button once again, can be for just one second, the camera will stop recording. Thereafter, it will save the video and it will automatically turn off. That's the quick capture feature. The usual way to turn on the camera would be using the button here at the side. I will push that now. The display will probably way too bright, but we will adjust that in a moment. So that's the usual start screen you would expect when buying this camera. And first of all, we need to select the language for this camera. There are several languages you can choose from. The display is really sensitive. It's annoying, but great that English is on the first position. We need to continue in English for this tutorial. Here's some legal stuff. I think you need to agree on that. GPS could be useful or not. I mean, if you're in the desert, if you're in a jungle and you would like to see where you took your footage, it might be interesting to see it on uh, a map like Google Maps later on in Lightroom maybe or in any post editing software to see the exact location. But of course it uh, takes a little bit more battery. But in this case I leave it off. Here's some information about the GoPro app. Install the GoPro app on your phone to finish a setup. You don't need that in the moment. We will come to this point later on when we connect the camera to our tablet or our smartphone. Tap on the arrow up here. Skip setup. Now we need to choose uh, the date. We're in the year 2020. Jesus, sometimes it goes so quick. And here's, so that's the, the month. Here is the date. The day, not the date. And 2020. Time, you can choose between AM, PM or 24 hours. Let's continue in 24 hours. Let's say it's 1704. And here's basically your start uh, screen already. As simple as that. First of all, I would like to adjust the brightness of the screen because otherwise you're not able to see all the symbols up here. Very quick on the lower left side is a green symbol. It's green because there is a memory card inserted into this camera. With this memory card, I'm able at the moment to take another eight hours and 15 minutes of video recording with these settings down here in 1080p, 60 frames per second in white. Up here is the video symbol, two points left, one left, one right. So if I do this, I jump into the time-lapse feature and you see that point is switched. Now I have three points to the right side. You can select one of the other points. So I'm now in time-lapse mode. If I push that button once again, I go into video mode. It's the button here at the side. If I push it once again, I go into photo mode. Make sure you only push it for a short amount of time because otherwise if you would push that button here on the side for let's say two or three seconds, the camera will switch off. Let's start by adjusting the brightness. To go into the menu, swipe from the top to the bottom. You have two points up here. On the, lower, on the upper right side it says GPS is off, the app is not connected. On the upper right side there's the time and the date and there's another point which indicates that there's another sub-menu. Let me see if my other hand works here. To the right and here we have two points, connections or preferences. We need to go on preferences should be in this place. There it is. Brightness. We will adjust the brightness now. Let's go down a little bit. Saves even some battery. So I think it's much better now. 
and let's start straight away with preferences here very quick. As you can see, there are all the points you get. Make sure to try to scroll down because there are some other points and this little bar here on the side will not be visible at all the times. The first point is a general. So as you might heard, there's a beep volume all the time, which you can adjust here. So that's high medium or low, I would recommend to keep it on in low because then you always know if the camera has done anything. So if you started a video, it will indicate that, not by only showing the LEDs, which will be visible soon. No, it will also give you an alarm signal that the camera has done any action. So if you started a video, it will beep. If you stop that video, it will beep once again but it will not beep in between, just for your information. Quick capture, that was the feature that I showed you by turning on the camera, means once the camera is off, let's switch it off for a second. So the camera is off, I can either switch it on here at the side, but since we would like to um, show you the quick capture feature. I push the button on top for two seconds. Now, as you can see, the camera turned on automatically. It started to record a video. Here's the time. And if you push that button once again, it saves that video and it's powering off. That is quick capture. Turn the camera on back again. As seen before, preferences again. So that is quick capture, default preset. So if you would like to turn on the camera and uh, you're not interested in having the video mode on straight away, you can choose between a last used. So if you were taking photos and if you switch back on the camera, it will be in photo mode. Otherwise you can choose between video mode a photo mode or time-lapse mode. Auto power off, I will put that to five minutes, not wasting any battery. And you do have some LEDs around the camera. So once you start to record a video, you will see a little LED on the, uh, on the front display blinking, which indicates that the camera is doing something. Let's say you would like to use that camera as a webcam or you would like to use that camera as a CCTV camera, yeah, if you would like to see what your neighbors are doing, don't tell them, then I would recommend to turn the LEDs off. If you would like to see if there is any action going on or you accidentally turned on the camera, I would recommend to leave them on. Anti-flicker, that is important to change the frame rates. Let me go back here for a second to show you what's going to happen if I use that feature. So that's the video mode, very quick. Here's standard, if I would like to see the resolution and the frames per second. I'm now recording in 1080p, so full HD, using 60 frames per second. In between, I can choose between full HD 24, 30, 60, 120, 240 frames per second. If I choose, I would like, uh, that's a notice, you will see some of these notes and I will explain them later on. If I would like to record in 4K, 60, that's possible as well. I can record in 4K 30 or 24 frames per second, but I'm not able to record in 4K using 120, 240 frames per second that is not available on this camera because these frame rates are not supported. So they are in gray, but you don't see 50 or 25 frames or 100 frames per second at the moment. And that's because you need to change anti-flicker. So if you live in Europe, like I do, you need to select 50 
hertz, not in all countries. Now you don't see the 120 or 240 frames per second anymore, but you do see 24, 25 or 50 frames per second. Let me go to 1080p. Then you can see you're able to record 24, 25, 50, 100 and 200 frames per second and not 120 and 240 anymore. That's kind of changing the, the video system from NTSC to Paul. Here's the video compression. So for anyone out there who would like to have a different format, down here you can change the date and the time and you would be able to change the date format as well. So if you'd like to see the months on the second uh, part and the day before the months and so on and so on, you can change it down here. That was general voice control. As you might heard, I think started with the uh, GoPro Hero 7, I guess. Since then you are able to control this camera using your voice. Doesn't make too much sense if you have the camera by your side at all the times, but it might be interesting for those of you who are doing skiing, for instance. Yeah. So if you have these gloves on and it's quite kind of hard to touch the camera or to, to find any of these buttons, then voice control might be a great option for you. You can switch that on and then the camera asks you, would you like to continue in your current language? We say yes, because it might be that the camera is set to German, for instance, but the voice control is set to English. Maybe that's for your users. It's maybe it's your camera and you rent this camera to a friend and he's going to ski he is going to skiing and then he would like to have the voice controls in English because he doesn't speak German. That's that's kind of the way why the GoPro asks you that. So the language is set to English and here are the voice controls, the commands that you can use. There's a it's an entire list. This list is available on the GoPro Hero website. So if you go to Google and um, search for something, GoPro voice commands, you will find a list of them. You can print them out and um, learn them by heart if you want to. So we have turned on quick capture now and I will demonstrate it. GoPro, start recording. GoPro, stop recording. Make sure once you use these controls that you use the exact phrase which is listed in the GoPro. If you say, oh, please GoPro, it won't work. GoPro, take a photo. GoPro, video mode. GoPro, time lapse mode. GoPro, take a photo. Cool. And I will show you now how you can deselect the voice control without going too deep into preferences. Take your finger, swipe from the bottom, uh, swipe from the top to the bottom, and disable voice control. Let's go to the right. So that was voice control, displays, orientation mode, really important. So at the moment, my uh, camera is set to a landscape mode, but in here I do have the uh, possibility to record also in portrait mode. And you can do the following. You can either leave it in all, then the camera is switching automatically between landscape and portrait mode. Otherwise you make it fixed to landscape mode. Screensaver, rear goes on after two minutes. Screensaver front, match rear screen. So if you change that time, it will change to the other time as well. The brightness, we spoke about that already. Save some battery here. Regional, here you can change the GPS. You can change the language of the GoPro if you would like to do so. Mods, really important. I will show you what these mods are. 
So the GoPro itself doesn't have a 3.5 millimeter um, audio jack. What you can do instead, you can buy one of these in media modes to be able to have a better audio quality or even the Max Lens mod, which will be available soon. You find them in the video description below as well. So these are extra features which will improve either the audio quality or the video quality of your camera by adding some extra stuff. About, here's the GoPro updates. To update this camera, you need to download the GoPro app, which is available for free in the Google Play or the iOS App Store. If you connect the camera the first time with your phone, it checks automatically if you're connected to, if the phone is connected to the internet, if there's any updates available, and then it's updating. It's, it's a simple two-step procedure. You say, yeah, update, download, and yeah, update, install, and then it's updating the firmware of your GoPro. Battery info, battery health is excellent. Compatible, yes, compatible, yes, it is. Reset at the bottom. So let's say your memory card is completely full and you would like to delete all the photos at once. Make sure to tap on format SD card. Reset presets. The presets, we will come to that in a moment. Reset camera tips. As you have seen, once I switched between the resolution and the frame rate, there was a little tip or a note. And these notes will disappear if I say, please don't show me these ones again. And if you accidentally skipped one of these notes, I can recommend to reset camera tips and then you will see them back again. However, I find them quite annoying because I know what the camera is going to do. So that's why I switched them off. You will see them during the, this presentation, but I used to skip them. If you sell this camera to someone else, make sure to use the factory reset. So the other one will be really, really happy to have a kind of new camera. That was the preferences. If we go to the left side back again, voice control, we spoke about that already. As you might have heard, there's still a, con uh, a little beep. We're in photo mode. That's why it only gives us one beep. If we go into video mode, and if I start to record a video now, hello, 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 and stop it, there's another beep. To turn off these beeps, switch them off. I will keep them off for this presentation at the moment. Quick capture is on for the moment. That was the feature when I showed you to turn on the camera, it starts automatically recording a video by pushing the button on the upside. Here's a screen lock. Now the screen is locked. To unlock the screen, tap to unlock. Yeah, now it's open. Go from the top to the bottom and disable screen lock once again. That's grid. So if now you have these lines here. I hope you can see them. If you would like to find the horizon or something, might be important for you. That's grids. Front screen options. We will come to this point later on when we discuss the front screen. Orientation locked. That is an important feature because my camera at the moment is just steady. It's here on that little tripod and it's on a desk and the orientation is locked. Let's assume you're sitting in your car and you have a suction cup with this camera attached to it and the, the suction cup is basically attached to the upper side of your windshield and then the camera points towards the other direction. So it's upside down. And to be able to have the video in the correct position later on during post-processing, it's important that you lock the orientation now. See what's going to happen if I turn the camera upside down. It automatically adjusts 
say orientation lock on. If I turn the camera now upside down, since the orientation is still locked, I'm recording upside down. So for normal purposes, I wouldn't use that. But just for instance, the camera needs to be upside down for any reason. I think the car is one of the best reasons to explain that. We have the orientation lock on. So if I turn the camera back again like this, and this feature is only available the max lens mode if you buy the extra lens for this GoPro. That was preferences and now we continue with the video mode. So the video mode on the upper left side we can record with the current settings of 1080p 60 frames in white for 8 hours 49 minutes with the memory card inserted. I have 256 gigabytes. If you're using a 128 gigabyte card, it would probably show you something like with the current settings, four hours and 25 minutes. I'm in video mode, that's displayed up here. The current battery level 66% and we have four symbols down here. With this symbol, you can change the focal length of this camera. Since this camera only has one lens and is not able to zoom, it will basically crop. So that is super view. I can recommend to use that mode if you do skiing, snowboarding, or if you are flying airplane or something and you would like to catch the entire flight deck or the entire scene. That is super view. To that is wide. So it's, it's still a huge focal length, basically. That's linear. Now, as you can see in the back, the edges are getting straight and you don't have this fish eye look anymore. Linear horizon leveling. That is important. How can I explain this feature? If you have this GoPro attached to a wing, of an airplane, let's say you're flying Cessna and you're doing any turns, then the camera will automatically adjust the horizon. You're flying a turn while the camera still records leveling. So the horizon will still be leveled. That's a new feature. And if you go to YouTube and look for the promotion video of the GoPro Hero 9 Black, they will show that feature exactly on an airplane wing. Really, really cool stuff. And that is narrow. So you get, now you see the, the, the field of view shrinks. You see less, but it, it looks like if you have zoomed in. Let's go back to white. That is the mode I usually use because super view is way too much for myself. And I usually Go in for this white slow mo. As you have seen now, have a look at the 1080p 124 moment. What's going to happen if I push the little snail here? Now it goes back to 1080p 60. If I push that once again, it enters into a slow motion mode. Let's have a look. what is going to happen. So it increased the frame rate to be able to record a slow motion video. It usually uses the maximum frame rate possible to be able to record a slow motion video. The more frames you use, the better your slow motion will be. I would like to show you now how to view the file that we just took together, swipe from the bottom to the top. Let me do it once again. Jesus, come on. So that is the video we took together. The only thing what the camera did is it took that video with a higher frame rate. So the higher the frame rate, the better your slow motion video will be. Later on in post-processing, you can decide if you would like to continue in slow motion or if you would like to keep a higher frame rate because it's recording the video also with audio. 
maybe you don't need the slow motion feature, then you have it. Uh, then you have a normal uh, video file with an audio file, or you can choose to have a slow motion video. On the upper right side, there is this loudspeaker which has this camera is included as well. Sweet, you can delete this file from the memory card of your GoPro. You can scroll through the video. It doesn't make sense for a video which takes three seconds. So you have a longer video for let's say two or three minutes and you need to, to go to the end. Make sure to tap on that bar. Highlight, really important feature. If you're coming back from vacation and let's say you took a thousand photos or a thousand videos and you don't want to have all of them on your computer, only the ones which you gave a highlight tag. That is cool because then you have your pictures sorted out before putting them onto your computer. If you would like to see all the files we took, make sure to tap on these squares on the upper left side. Then it's loading. Up here it already says multi-select multi lets you select more than one item to delete. So here are all the files we took together using the GoPro Hero 9 Black. If I would like to delete these three scenes, I can do it straight away by selecting them. So these ones are video files because there is a time and that's a photo because there is no time. Delete, yes. Going back into the video mode, there's a little bar now on top. Swipe from the top to the bottom and then we are back in video mode. Let's disable slow-mo and as you can see it jumps back to 1080p 60 frames per second. Boost, that's the image stabilizer. And that's hyper smooth boost. And it gives you an important note here, maximizes video stabilization with a tight cropping. So here's the important feature. I don't need 5K video, but if you record in 5K using the maximum boost, so the maximum image stabilization, it, does, it crops your video. It crops the edges and therefore it's nice to have a higher resolution to be able to have at the end still a 4K video and that's why you have 5K on this camera. So boost is now on. Have a look what you will see if I switch that off. Now you can see the entire flower is on the scene. If I switch boost back on, it's cropped. Keep that in mind and with boost there is no zooming available which we come which we speak about now that's the zoom feature since the camera only has a single lens it's not able to zoom that's a digital zoom keep that in mind the image quality or the photo quality doesn't get better just because you're zooming now you can start to record a video but it's cropping into the 1080p video so use that feature only to make small adjustments. Let's say you say, ah, I need to be a little bit closer, but there's no other way for me to adjust the camera, um, maybe in your car or something, then use just a little of zooming. I wouldn't use it too much because as I told you, you are cropping in. Video mode, really important. These ones are presets, which are new on the GoPro, since the GoPro Hero 8, you can add your own presets down here. What a preset does, I will explain that in a second. To be able to change these presets, make sure to tap on the upper right side. And let's say I would like to have the slow-mo video on top. Just move it. As you can see, you can adjust them like on your iPhone these big tech companies. They're always spying on each other. So let's say you would like to have a slow motion video. You can use that preset. It gives you in 1080p the maximum frames per second, 240 and we're now recording in white. To be able to change 
the resolution, just follow my steps here. As you can see, with that preset, I would be able to choose in 1080p 120, 240 frames per second. I can select 2.7K and then it gives you one of these nodes to play back at this resolution. It means 2.7K or the frame rate. Your phone or computer must support HEAVC. Yes, I would like to skip that mode and see in 2.7K, I only have 120 frames per second available. Since this one is grayed out, I can select 1080p and then I have two options, 120 or 240 frames per second or even have uh, 1440 and then the maximum resolution would still be 120 frames per second. I hope you get the point. I jump back to 1080p because if I would like to record a, a slow motion video, I would either stick 1080p, 120 or 240 frames per second. These are the only options you have here in the resolution frame rate point. You can select the lens you would like to have. At the moment we have white selected. Let's say you always want to have that preset with the super view mode. Jump to super view. Let's say you would like to have linear with hor horizon leveling. Then you select that point and I will show you what is going to happen. See, it saves that automatically. Doesn't make too much sense in slow motion, so I would go for white. Hyper smooth is set to on, so that's the image stabilizer. And here it gives you a little note, stabilizes video. And here in parentheses, crops white lens 10%. What you can do is, using Hyper Smooth 3.0 in Boost and then gives you the information maximum video stabilization but with tight cropping. Keep that in mind. To, I would recommend to have a higher resolution here not recording a 1080p video. Yeah, I mean if you're doing skiing, mountain biking or anything like that where you have a lot of movement I would go for Boost. Scheduled Capture. That's a new feature on the GoPro Hero 9 Black and it's a really important feature because it allows you to stay in your bed not waking up at 3 or 5 o'clock in the morning to be able to record the sunset. You can stay in your bed, really cool. So you can turn it on and it allows you to set a time when the camera should start to record, in this case, a slow motion video at 5.42 p.m. and that as you can see you are not able to choose a date because you can set the scheduled capture only 24 hours before the event is happening. Really really cool feature that is important for instance a time lapse. Yeah, You would like to record a time lapse which we'll speak later on again and let's, you checked when the sun is rising stay in your bed until 7 the camera took already the time lapse for you because you used the scheduled capture feature. You can set a duration which is also really important because you might run out of battery but the sunrise was only for 30 minutes and then you have a scheduled, um, a scheduled capture with a duration of 30 minutes and then the camera turns off automatically. Cool isn't it? Hindsight, that's also a new feature and here it gives you a little information. Capture video with hindsight off. Your video will start when the shutter button is pressed. So they're speaking about this button here. Then you have hindsight 15 and 30 seconds. And then it gives you an important mode. Start your video with 15 seconds of footage captured by your camera before you pressed the shutter button to record. So what that means is the camera takes a video basically at all times in a looping of 15 seconds and only when you start to record a video by pushing the shutter release button it starts that video and let's say you have missed a moment which happened 5 seconds before you tapped on the shutter release button the GoPro started to record the video already. 
Yeah, I'm pr I probably won't use that feature at all, but it's nice to have. You can set a timer. Let's say you would like to show your audience what you're good in, let's say in sports or something. Then you can set a timer up to 10 seconds. Yes. So by using this feature, pushing the shutter release button, you have 10 seconds to go in front of the camera, do your exercise and the camera will make an alarm once these 10 seconds are elapsed. I don't need that for a moment. Protune, really important for everyone out there who is uh, interested in manual controlling of the GoPro or even if you do a lot of post-processing, you can choose a bit the, the bitrate, the shutter. So you're able to choose the shutter speeds you would like to use for your videos. Exposure compensation. So if you think, well, my footage is always underexposed, you can go to exposure compensation. Let's say your footage is always underexposed, use this one. If you say your footage is always overexposed, you go towards the minus direction. White balance, that is warm. And that is cool. So if you're doing any manual video recording, the place you're on and say, ah, well, yes, we do have some artificial light, but it's way too warm. Let's go a little bit cooler. You would be able to do it down here. Minimum ISO, maximum ISO. The more ISO you have, the more grain you will have in your footage. The maximum for video would be 6,400. GoPro color, really important for those of you who are interested in color grading later on. So that is the GoPro color and that's a flat profile which allows you to do some color correction later on in post. As you can see, there's basically no contrast added to your footage at the moment. You can do that really easily in post. Raw audio is off. The camera allows you also to record raw audio, which is pretty cool. You can do that down here. Wind. Always filters out excessive wind noise. Always records in stereo with no wind noise reduction. Shortcuts. The shortcuts are the little symbols at the screen. As you can see, we are now in slow motion mode and all of them are turned off. Let's say I would like to have the white balance in the lower left side, I go to white balance and on the lower right side, let me see, what do we have here? The timer, go back. Now we have the white balance on the lower left side. You can adjust it without going too deep into the menu and I have the timer feature which you can set now to three seconds start recording now a 1080p video 120 frames per second in white here's our three seconds of timer and now the camera starts to record a slow motion video 1080p push it again and that's it Timer, boom, white balance, back to auto. If I would like to get rid of these two, or if I would like to have another one there, you can either select another one or restore. And then, are you sure you want to restore this preset to its original setting? Restore. And then they are invisible. So that is one of the presets. You have different preset types here. You have for instance a cinematic. If you would like to record a cinematic kind of looking footage it shows you 4k 30 frames per second. You can edit these presets um, down here. Protune as seen before. No specials here. Shortcuts change the white balance, scheduled, 
capture, duration, hindsight, if you would like to record your cinematic footage, always in 5K, 30 frames per second, it will adjust this preset to 5K, 30 frames per second, linear with horizon leveling. That was, that, that's the L plus, that's what it means. Go to standard, because that is the video mode I usually record my videos in. Doesn't mean that you have to do it. But in here, as seen, you have all the options. You can record in 4K, in a 4 to 3 format, 2.7K, 1440. Here are all the frame rates down here. So that's the resolution. And here are the frame rates possible. That is 4K with 24, 30 or 60 frames per second. And as you see, I usually skip these notes. We're speaking about the notes when we went to preferences and really at the bottom we had this restore tips. So preferences, reset, reset camera tips. If you would like to see these tips, make sure to restore them. So let me show you something with 4K. 60 frames per second in wide, I will be able to record 7 hours and 14 minutes with the memory remaining on my SD card. So I would like to record now in 5K. If I push now 5K, it reduces the frame rate because we are not able to record in 5K using 60 frames per second because the maximum frame rate you can get in 5K is 30 frames per second. And to see how long we would be able to record in 5K, it's still 7 hours and 14 minutes because we're using a slower frame rate. It's kind of the same memory it takes probably then. Let's say 1080p, 30 frames per second. Let's see how long we'll be able to record then. 9 hours and five minutes. So if you adjust the frame rate, if you adjust the resolution, it automatically adjusts the time remaining on your memory card. Let's say 240. Live preview is unavailable. I will come to that point later on. So recording in 1080p using 240 frames per second in wide, I would be able now to record for seven hours and 14 minutes. So keep that in mind. If you would like to have just a simple video, let's say in a high resolution because you have at home a high resolution TV, take it either in 4K 60 or 4K 30. 4K 30 is wonderful. It gives you that kind of cinematic effect. It's, it's not too fast. It's not too slow. If you would like to record a slow motion of something which is moving like a someone who's doing sport, take into account that you will need a higher frame rate if, only if, you need to make a slow motion video out of it. If slow motion doesn't matter, stick to 4K, 30 frames per second, and you're good to go. Let's say that this part of the video is way too dark for you. Push on the button, uh, push on the display, and then you can shift the spot towards the edge and then it automatically adjusts the brightness which the camera thinks is correct for this part. So to be able to jump into photo mode, use the bottom here at the side. Then we're in photo mode, otherwise you could have used your fingers to swipe between the main menu up here. In photo mode, you have the following options. On the upper right side, you do have the battery indication saying 48% left. On the upper left side, you see three times the nine, which means you can take more than a thousand photos with the memory card inserted into the GoPro. Down here, you have wide angle. You also have a linear lens 
which tightens all the edge, well, which straight, which makes all the edges here straight, so you don't have the fish eye look anymore. That is narrow. Let's get away with it. It's a timer feature. So you would like to have a photo together with your family. You put the camera somewhere, you set the timer to 10 seconds, push the shutter release button, then you will see that timer. And if you have selected the beep on, you will even hear the beep. It goes down and now it took a photo with a timer of 10 seconds. Here's another note, let's skip that for a second. Down here you, you will be able to zoom in, however I would recommend not to use that feature too often because it doesn't make your image quality better since it's only a digital zoom so it crops into your photo. Cropping is never good. And here you can choose the output. So we are now in standard mode so all these features are available. If we would like to do any post editing with our photos say color adjustments or you would like to have more information saved into that file. I would recommend to take a raw image but only if you have a program for instance like Adobe Lightroom which can handle these raw files. They're not too big about 10 megabyte, 10 to 20 megabyte, maximum 20 megabytes and you will be able later on to do a lot in post-processing if you record your photos in raw but some of the features are not available so you won't be able to choose another lens and you won't be able to zoom in with a RAW. You can take an HDR photo, that makes sense if you have a lot of shadows and sun in your scene. The next one would be a super photo so the camera decides itself Rather it's like to take an HDR photo or a normal photo so it tries to basically find the correct balance between an HDR and a standard photo. Let's stick to standard here very quick. If you tap on the photo you have all these options so these ones are all presets. Let's make ourselves a new preset. Let's say it would be a normal photo the lens would be white. If I change the output to raw, yeah, the lens is gone. Let's go back to standard. Then I would be able to choose from our focal length here. You can select a timer, so anytime you hit this preset, let's say 10 seconds. Protune, yeah, the maximum ISO we would like to use for this preset would be 400 because we do have enough ambient light available and we would like to use a flat profile, sweet. And maybe we need some shortcuts on the lower left is the lens, lower right the zoom, timer and output. And yes, now we can save this preset. And let's call it, that's a wonderful preset for outdoor. Let's say outdoor or POV. No, let's say outdoor. Have a look. Now we have created our own preset for outdoor. See, this one was added to our preset list. Now we're recording in a flat profile in normal photo mode. It always gives us now the 10 seconds of a timer once we tap on the shutter release button. And since we do have these shortcuts around the photo mode, you will be able to adjust the setting straight away without going too deep into the menu. Let's say the timer is way too long, I make it in three seconds, then select three seconds. That is one of the presets. To delete this preset, scroll down and tap on delete. Back into photo mode, you have tons of options. As I said, the output, HDR, zoom, timer, exposure compensation, protune. That's the same settings you got during the video mode. And I think you get the kind of principle what's behind that. 
Um, live burst. I'm not using live burst at all. It reduces the um, resolution now to 8 megapixel. Can I go higher? 12 megapixel would be available. Yeah. Scheduled capture, let's say today at, I don't know, 7 5 p.m. I would like to have a live burst photo. I would like to record my live burst in a flat profile selected from here. And what a live burst is, it's kind of like the live photo you got using your iPhone. So it takes a scene, it took, no, it takes a series of photos, but with audio. However, these are photos. I'm not using that feature at all, but maybe you do. Burst, that is important for those of you who are doing, for instance, sports. Yeah, that allows you to take a high series of shots and you can select the burst rate up here. And it goes, the maximum you can take is 30 photos in 10 seconds. Make sure to have a memory card with a fast writing speed, otherwise you will probably, the, the camera will hang up or will stuck or will take even longer to save these files. Set your GoPro to capture 30 photos in 10 seconds. That's really important. Let's say if you're doing sports and you would like to have an exercise. And let's, the, the cool thing about this one here is now that you can select also a, a scheduled capture. Your grandma is not able to control the GoPro, but you have a presentation of what you're doing and you know exactly when you start. Put your camera onto a tripod, select the scheduled, a scheduled capture, give yourself a timer of 10 seconds and then you start once the timer has elapsed. Protune settings are available here as well, shortcuts are available as well. Let's see what it's doing. Now we have a timer of 10 seconds. You go into in front of the camera. You see that the timer is running since there's the little LED on this side, so as on the other side. And now you're doing your exercise. The camera takes a series of shots. Boom, there we go. That was 10 photos in three seconds in white to view these photos. Swipe from the bottom to the top. And now it jumps in between these series of shots. Stop it here for a second. That was the photo I didn't like. You have two arrows pointing here to the left. Let's say, ah, uh, that was a cool photo. Let's highlight it. So in the app, you will be able to see exactly this photo with a highlight tag. Let's say, I don't like this photo anymore, then you can delete just this photo or you can delete the entire series. But I would like to delete only this photo. You can jump between those photos. Here's by, by the way the highlight tag. Let's say picture number eight was really cool, but picture number nine wasn't cool. So I would like to delete only this photo. So I I think you see the point here. These are the photos that we took together. Let's say we had enough of them, delete them. And to go out of this menu, swipe from the top to the bottom and then you're back in burst mode. Burst mode, really important if you're doing any kind of sports or like skateboarding you're in a half pipe, you're doing anything which, which requires a higher burst rate, really important feature. The last point down here is night photo. I think you kind of know these photos when you're taking a picture at night using your phone, also pretty small camera sensor, without a flash, without any light available. And you see all this kind of grain onto your photo, which reduces the image quality. That's because you didn't know what to do or to expose correctly. By the way, there's a 
video on my channel, which I did, I think, last year or the year before, where I explained to you how to expose correctly using ISO, shutter speed and the aperture. I can highly recommend to have a look at this video because after that video you will be able to control every camera out there, any camera out there. So in the night mode you can of course select the focal length, stick with this one, but the important point here is the shutter. Because if you have a tripod by your hand and you would like to capture the night sky, then it's recommended to use a higher shutter speed since your camera is on a tripod anyways. Uh, and what is going to happen if I would like to take a shutter of 15 seconds? I will show you that in a moment. So here's our shutter. And the camera is exposing now for 15 seconds. And I promise you straight away we will have a bright photo. It will only be white. There it is. Because we do have enough ambient light available here. So there's no need for us to have an exposure time of 15 seconds. However, if you are in the desert and you have the most beautiful sky you've ever seen, then it's recommended to have a tripod by your hand and to put the camera onto that tripod, exposing a little bit longer to be able to see the sky with all the stars. I can give you another example if I would if I am now taking a shutter speed of two seconds. You see a bit more, but it's still way too bright. As you can see now, you can see the flower. You do see the GoPro. My previous GoPro Hero 7, but it's still overexposed. That's because we do have enough ambient light available here. So make sure to use this, this feature, the night photo, if you don't have too much ambient light available. So to capture a night sky, I would go between 10 and 30 or 20 seconds. Depends on how much light is available. The output can either be a standard photo or a raw photo. I'm always shooting in raw because I would like to do adjustments in post-processing. Scheduled a capture, really nice. You're sleeping in your tent while you're in the middle of the desert and you would like to see what is going on during the night here in our sky. Scheduled departure, uh, scheduled departure, yeah. Scheduled capture, select the time the camera should start to record at 1.17 a.m. The camera takes a photo and exposes an exposed death photo for 10 seconds. Let's switch that off, otherwise I forgot it to turn it off later on. There's a timer feature as well. Zoom. Protune. Jesus. Shortcuts. As seen before. I don't know why this camera is so sensitive sometimes and sometimes not. Go out of this menu. So night photo, really important to, to make the maximum out of the image quality, make sure to have a tripod, make sure to use a longer exposure time. So not to run out of battery, I have now connected a power bank to my GoPro Hero 9 Black. I will list it also in the video description below. It's a pretty cool power bank, by the way, because it can charge your MacBook as well. So is your iPad within two hours. Last but not least important topic is the time-lapse feature. Let's push up, ah, no, let's do it the other way. By swiping with our fingers towards the menu up here, we're now in time warp mode. If you push on that, you see the time lapse mode beneath it, and there's also a night lapse mode. With, of course, the presets you can all adjust by yourself, as seen in this video. What does a time warp mean? It's a stabilized time lapse video. 
really, really cool feature, which was first introduced, I guess, with the GoPro Hero 7 Black, which is in front of the GoPro Hero 9 down here. Let's have a look what the adjustments are. So the resolution, I always go for the higher resolution, in this case 4K, because I do have enough memory and you can choose, you can select the lens and the speed is the important thing now here. So let's say you would like to go with 5x. That means speed up and stabilize your video by 5x. Tip, one minute of recording creates about 10 seconds of time warp video. So if you walk through your city for one minute, recording with 5x speed, you will have a video of 10 seconds while you walked and it's stabilized. It's a stabilized time-lapse video. Really, really cool. The maximum you can go is this one here, 30x. Five minutes of recording creates about 10 seconds of time warp video. Let's have a different one here. Let's take 10x. Five minutes of recording creates 10 seconds of time warp video. So anytime you walk, and you have the camera by your hand or it's um, with a suction cup attached to your car, use time warp. If the camera is stationary on a tripod, for instance, choose time lapse. If you're building your new house, then make a time lapse and not a time warp video. Scheduled, uh, scheduled capture, not departure. Duration, timer, on, off, we spoke about that already. Pro tune, you have all the settings you can use. Sharpness, high, GoPro color, or we can choose a flat profile. Wind reduction, the shortcuts. See on the upper left, we don't have a shortcut at the moment. Let's say we would like to, oh yeah, that's a cool, cool one. We would like to have the color one. Go back, 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 and as you can see on the upper left side, we have now the color symbol, which we can now choose between GoPro color and a flat color profile. You do have the zooming feature available as well. However, I'm not recommending it while taking a time warp video. The lens as seen before. And let's have a look at time-lapse and let's have a look at the difference between a time-lapse and a time warp video. So as I said, anytime you move, take a time-lapse, anytime the camera is stationary, set on a tripod and you would like to capture a time-lapse, then go for time-lapse. Time-lapse is important because you can choose between the resolutions. I go with a 4K, you can choose the lens. And here's the important part. You can choose between a photo and a video. If you don't want to have any trouble figuring out how to make a time-lapse in, in post-processing, take a time-lapse video. If you know what you're doing and you would like to adjust, let's say, um, the image quality, the resolution, would like to do color grading, all that kind of stuff in post-processing, go with photo. Then you can select the output to RAW. Later on you will be able in post, let's say with Adobe Lightroom, to adjust the image quality, to, to, to do all these things, the, 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 the color temperature, the white balance, the contrast, the brightness, all that kind of stuff in post-processing while you, while you record in RAW. However, the lens is not available now anymore. And then the camera records now a time-lapse, not as a video, it creates single photos with an interval of minimum five seconds. In RAW, if I go to standard, you can choose a different interval up down to 0.5 seconds. And this feature is not available if you record in RAW. It only starts at an interval of 5 seconds. I think it's there to protect yourself because RAW files are a little bit bigger than the standard JPEG files. 
And if you don't have a memory card with a fast writing speed, then it's probably better that the camera has a little time to buffer. So it gives you a minimum interval of five seconds up to 60 minutes. So if you're building your house and the camera is set on a tripod and you would like to combine all these pictures together later on in post, go with format photo and then have a software by your hand, even for your MacBook or on your iPad or even on your phone, a time-lapse creator or something, then you can select the entire folder and making a time-lapse out of the single individual photos. If that is all too much for you, stick to time-lapse video because there you can choose the resolution, you can choose the interval. So basically what we're telling now the camera, please camera, take a scene or take a picture every 60 seconds, merge them together later on in a 4K video. You're building your house, the camera is set on a tripod. You're building that house for, let's just make it simple, for an entire day. Make sure to attach your camera to a power bank, push the shutter release button, and then the camera starts to create a 4K time-lapse video with an interval of 60 seconds. The, the slower uh, or the, the, the quicker everything happens in your scene, let's say you're, I don't know, you're painting a picture, take a slower interval, let's say of a second or even less of point, five seconds if you would like to have a time-lapse while you draw a picture. Scheduled departure is available as well. Uh, that's pretty interesting. If you know that the sun, there's a beautiful sunset at exactly 7 p.m., you set the scheduled capture to 7 p.m., the duration then whatever to, let's say 7 p.m., Seven, ah, oh, Jesus. So at 7 p.m. there is a beautiful sunset next to my house. And the sunset lasts for 30 minutes. Push the shutter, uh, no, you don't need to push it. You can turn your camera off. The camera turns on automatically, creating now a 4K time-lapse video with an interval of 0.5 seconds. It starts at 7 p.m. It lasts for 30 minutes and then the camera turns off automatically. There's a timer feature as well, uh, available as well. Pro tune settings, shortcuts, and that is the time lapse feature. Time night lapse, that is really important. Same options here, 4K, 1080p, 1440, 4K, 4x3. Um, the lens format. This is the occasion where I'm always going with um, photo. Because it is now important that you get the maximum quality out of your image. That's why I would go by taking a night time lapse with photo mode. I would select at least a shutter of, let's say, two seconds or five or ten seconds, depends on what you're filming. If you're filming the night sky passing by, let's say you take a night shutter of 15 seconds, so the camera will expose for longer, it will take now a photo every 15 seconds. No, here's the interval. It will take a photo every 30 seconds or even every 30 minutes or 60 minutes. Let's stick to 30 seconds. And it will expose that photo for 15 seconds. Later on in post, you need to, to merge these photos together, but you have the best quality. While doing a video, the quality isn't that good during the night due to the restriction because you're not able to allow the shutter speed to 
be, let's say, at 5, 2, or even 10 seconds. The output, you can choose between standard or a raw file, scheduled capture, you can set a duration, let's say, um, do it for three hours. We don't need a timer for that. Exposure compensation, white balance, shortcut. Yeah, that was the time-lapse mode. So here you can see that is the front display of my GoPro Hero 5. Uh, we are now in time night lapse mode. On the upper left side you have the indication of the memory storage remaining. Here's the battery, then that's the symbol for time lapse. And we're now in night lapse. We are exposing with 15 seconds interval, 30 seconds in white. Here on the bottom, on this side, I can switch between photo video, a uh, photo, video and time-lapse mode. Here's the movie mode. We are now recording in 4K, 30 frames per second in white. Battery remaining 47% and with this resolution I can take another 6 hours, 55 minutes of a video. The resolution on this screen is not that good, however it's wonderful to control your image and what you get on it. Stop that video. And we took already 105 video scenes on this memory card. See if I take another one, it start that video and with some resolutions and some frame rates, the picture on the front display is not available. So you don't see anything. You see it, uh, you see the time elapsing, but you don't see any footage. That's because the, the monitor on your front side does not support higher frame rates, like for instance 240 frames per second while recording a slow motion video in 1080p. Stop that video. Now the camera says we took already 106 clips. Go to photo. Now let's take a photo. It's a night photo. Here's the timer which is displayed now on the front side. Four, three, two, one. And we took already 736 photos. Sweet. What kind of options do you have with this front display? Swipe from the top to the bottom, tap on that symbol here. And as you can see at the moment, it's only a small portion what we see on the front display. If you would like to have the entire, what the entire lens captures uh, on your display, you need to select this point here, actual screen. And if we take a video now, oh no, 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 that's photo. I think we have to let it run because I'm now in photo mode. I made this mistake. Wait a second. The night photo even, 737. So video, as you can see, now we're seeing everything, but it's a little bit more compressed because it's recording in a 16 to nine format. Still, you have the uh, memory card storage remaining, the battery remaining, video mode, standard 4K, 30 frames per second. If I start to record a video now, now you see the entire scene with that super wide angle lens and it's not too compressed by just showing my face. Let's jump back very quick to show you once again the difference here. Full screen. So I didn't make any adjustments about the lens itself, but it's just showing you the center portion of the camera sensor what it's now recording. What other options do we have? We have this one here, status only. So here it says we took 108 movie clips already because if I switch to photo mode it should probably display now 737. 
737 pictures we took already. Time lapse, photo, video. So, see, there's only the statues and it's not showing yourself. And the last option, I guess, is probably front display off. Maybe you will use this camera to record your front yard and you don't want to show it to everyone that you have a camera running because the front display is on, then I recommend to switch it off. As I promised you, now at the end we will connect the GoPro with the phone. In this case I'm using an iPhone 8 Plus. Make sure to download also this app here called Splice. With Splice you can add, edit all your photos and videos that you took using the GoPro and it's absolutely for free. It's an app also made by a GoPro. Keep that in mind. The app we need now is this one here. It's also for free. You find it in the Google Play Store and in the Apple App Store. Is the camera still running? Yes, it is still running. Swipe from the top to the bottom. Swipe to the right. Select connections. Wireless connections on. Say connect. But first, oh, I need to go back very quick. Make sure to select 2.4 gigahertz because I had some trouble with the 5 gigahertz network. So make sure you use 2.4 gigahertz if you don't have a phone which is uh, the newest iPhone or the newest uh, Samsung phone, whatever. Make sure to use 2.4 gigahertz. You will have less problems with that network. If you would like to reset all connections, make sure to tap on that button here. Otherwise, go wireless connection on, connect, then connect device, GoPro app, and it's now showing you exactly this app. Tap on it, and I have this problem here that my iPhone will probably fall off, but I try to manage it. So make sure to switch on Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. Tap on this little symbol down here, which is the camera, and then it says add camera. Yes, please do so. Now it's searching for your GoPro camera and we found your GoPro. Wow, amazing. And it's my GoPro because it's the only one around me. Bluetooth pairing request, pair. Now connection successful. Wow, we made it. You can change the name of your GoPro down here by tapping on the X. However, this name suits, so I say save new name. Now it's connecting. Your GoPro Hero 9 is ready, sweet, connecting. And that was the kind of issue I had previously as well. There will be probably a firmware update soon. Um, sometimes I was able to view the preview and sometimes I was not. So I guess they will fix it soon. Um, and that was also a problem with the 5 GHz network, that it didn't work at all. And using the 2.4 GHz, it worked. So let me show you that in a second. I'm now in video mode. 4K, 30 frames per second in white. See what's listed down here? Standard, 4K, 30 frames per second in white. Cool. I do have all the same features which I have on both displays. 6 hours 54 minutes, 6 hours 54 minutes, that's the battery level and enable preview and here I had the problem sometimes, wants to join Wi-Fi, yes, connecting, see if it works or not, should work. And now I see exactly what my GoPro sees, sweet isn't that? Um, you can zoom 
in, zoom out, but I, as I said, that's a digital zoom. You can start to record a video by tapping on this black button down here. As you can see, now it says on your camera display, there's a time elapsing. And that is the problem I previously had and I'm hoping for a firmware update soon because now it says Wi-Fi connection lost. Well, the camera is like five centimeters away from my phone, so it shouldn't lose it. And then you can stop a video. And these kind of connecting problems, I, I had it quite a few times. Sometimes it works quite perfectly, sometimes it's not working at all, like now, but they will fix it sooner or later. Just give them a little bit more time. You can switch between the photo and the video mode. So if I would like to take a photo now, it takes a photo with a timer. Wi-Fi connection lost, thanks for that. And up here, we see that we can take another 17,000 plus photos with the memory card in, in our GoPro. Come on. To go live, yes, you will be able to do any live streams out there. The, the, the thing I can recommend while doing so is to have either a steady internet connection, so the GoPro doesn't have internet at all. Don't get this wrong. The camera only has Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. With Bluetooth you can control the camera and with Wi-Fi you transfer the files onto your phone, say a video or a photo file. But the camera itself doesn't have any internet. The only way to connect the GoPro to the internet is using an app, like this GoPro app, or you connect it to your computer. You can also use it as a webcam. Make sure to follow the steps as seen in this video. Go to the GoPro website, tap on apps, and on the right side there is um, a program with webcams or something. Download this one, it's absolutely for free. On your computer you select as a video camera source the GoPro, and then you will be able to use the GoPro as a webcam. As simple as that, there are tons of videos on YouTube already explaining you how to do that. But if you want to go live, let's say you're a DJ and you have a big crowd in front of you and you would like to go live, make sure to have a steady internet connection with your phone or to connect to a local Wi-Fi network. That's how it works. We will be able to go into time-lapse mode, photo mode and down here you will be able to adjust all the settings like on your camera, that's a normal photo. Bam, here it is. I can select also all the kinds of um, settings we had on our GoPro. So timer, scheduled capture, minimum ISO, maximum ISO, the white balance. We can add these shortcuts if you want to. And that's simple as it can be. And as you can see with the normal photo mode, in white, am I taking now any raw files? Output, that would be raw. I can take 12,686 pictures or photos. I think it's called photos in English. If we select standard, changes to 46,447. Up here you can adjust all the settings, voice control, the beeps, the LEDs. So that's the entire menu we had on our GoPro when we were swiping from the top to the bottom. You have all these options, anti-flicker, video compression, language, GPS on, off, orientation, LCD brightness, and so on and so on. We have it all here in this menu, if this helps you to control the camera. Let's say we would like to transfer some photos to our phone. Let's say this one is pretty cool, this one is pretty cool, this one looks nice. And we would like to have a video as well, then we take this one. So we selected some of them. 
we would be able now to delete them from the storage of the memory card which is inserted into our GoPro straight away by pushing on the bin or downloading them into our GoPro app. Once they're in the app, they're not on, they're basically on your phone, but they're inside the app. To see them in your library, you need to do another step, which is quite annoying, but I will show you how that works once this video clip has finished transferred, transferring to my phone. As you can see, a normal JPEG file here, 9.7 megabytes, here 7.7, 12.7 megabyte, and the video file had a file size of 117.6 megabyte. Make sure to tap now on view media. And these are the clips and photos which we downloaded already onto our app. Let's take these two photos. Then you need to push that symbol down here and save to phone. Click, 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 click. Close. Let me switch off the GoPro. So you see we're not doing anything with the GoPro anymore. Go to albums and here are our pictures we took with our GoPro. Down here you can delete them, you can set them as your favorite, you can edit them which is pretty cool because you can use one of these iPhone filters, adjust the settings if you want to, pretty pretty cool. I can highly recommend to use a flat profile here because then you have even more options. I mean, you don't have more options here, but the dynamic is much better. So that's a photo we took with the GoPro. And it looks pretty cool to be honest. That's one of the selfies I took. Let's put in one of the iPhone filters. So just the exposure, the brilliance highlights or let's go with another one this feature here uh, this filter looks pretty cool and here's also a video i took with the gopro see it's stabilized it's 4k and it's in super view if i would like to put on a filter that's possible as well see that's like kind of these Instagram filters. What I can do, I can also crop in. Pretty, pretty cool. And if I would like to share this video now with my friends at home, because I'm on vacation and they're 5,000 miles away, make sure to use that symbol down here. You can transfer it straight onto Dropbox, share it with friends via WhatsApp, Telegram, iMessage, Instagram, Facebook, or even YouTube if you want to. Make sure to connect then to a local Wi-Fi network, maybe from your hotel. So I hope that explained everything you needed to get started with your GoPro Hero 9. So ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for your undivided attention. If you wonder why I wear these glasses, there was something in my eyes and I try to protect them now for a couple days. If you have any remaining questions, please feel free to post a comment down below. If you would like to support my channel, feel free to buy the GoPro or the predecessor or any extras from the links listed in the video description below. Make sure to follow me on Telegram, one of the best messengers on this planet here, where I share all the information well before I share them on YouTube. It's absolutely for free, by the way. Did I forget anything? Yeah, if, the, if there's an index, also pinned as a comment under this video. So if you're just interested on how to go live or if you would like to see how to take a photo or a night time lapse, make sure to have a look exactly at the hour or the minute or the seconds where to start this video from. Thank you very much. All the best from Frankfurt. I hope this video helped you and see you very soon. Bye bye.